Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about some of the very basics of modern chemistry. Now one of the most fundamental principles of modern chemistry is the idea that matter is composed of atoms. I'm sure you've been introduced to this idea before. Let's review together the basic structure of the atom. An atom, of course, consists of two principal parts. First is the nucleus. The nucleus is very small. It's dense, relatively heavy, and positively charged, and sits at the center of the atom. The second part is this electron cloud. That cloud consists of tiny, light, negatively charged electrons moving at high speed. Now, most of the volume of the atom is in that electron cloud. But what's interesting is that most of the mass is in the nucleus. <sighs> now, let's look at the nucleus in particular. The nucleus consists of a mix of two kinds of particles. First, there are protons. These are positively charged. And second, there are neutrons. These have no charge. The two kinds of particles, protons and neutrons, have almost identical mass, although the neutron is slightly heavier. Now, as you know, atoms are neutral. And for the atom to be neutral, the number of positively charged protons in the nucleus has to be the same as the number of negatively charged electrons in the electron cloud. Of course, not all matter is made from the same kind of atoms. There are, in fact, 92 different kinds of atoms found in nature. Exactly how do they differ from one another? Well, they differ in the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, those particles that we talked about. Let's talk first about what happens when we vary the number of protons in the nucleus. We'll start with the simplest atom, which has one proton in the nucleus. Now, to be neutral, of course, this atom has one electron in the electron cloud. If we then add one more proton, and, of course, one more electron to keep the atom neutral, the chemical nature of the atom changes dramatically. Now, that's why each kind of atom with a unique number of protons has a unique name. For example, an atom that has one proton is called a hydrogen atom. An atom that has two protons is called a helium atom, and so on. The number of protons in the nucleus is so important, in fact, that we give it a name itself. We call it the atomic number of the atom. So, uh, the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. The atomic number of helium is 2. Now, the set of atoms that have the same atomic number is called an element. For example, hydrogen is an element, helium is an element, and so on. Well, what if we change the number of neutrons and keep the number of protons the same? That, of course, doesn't change the chemical properties much. We're talking about the same element. But it does change the mass of the atom. Now, atoms of the same element, that is, atoms that have the same number of protons in the nucleus, but different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. For example, a common isotope of hydrogen has no neutrons, but another has one neutron in the nucleus. A common isotope of helium has two neutrons in the nucleus, but some helium atoms just have one. We use a special notation to represent an atom of a unique kind. We start with the symbol to represent the element. For helium, that symbol is He. 
And each element not only has a unique name, but a unique symbol. Below and to the left of the symbol, we write the atomic number, that is, the number of protons. And of course, for helium, that number is two. And that number is unique to helium. Only helium atoms have two protons. To the upper left of the symbol, we put the total of the number of protons plus neutrons. If in this case the number of neutrons is two, then that number would be four. And we give that number, in the upper left, a special name. It's called the mass number. Let's look at the symbol for another isotope of helium now. For example, here's the symbol of an atom of helium that has only one neutron in the nucleus. Next, let's look at what happens if we change the number of electrons on an atom. To do that, let's introduce the element carbon. Here's the symbol for a typical carbon atom. Now let's check if you've understood. How many electrons would we find on a neutral carbon atom? The answer, of course, is six. Well, what happens if we take one of the electrons off? First, is it still a carbon atom? Well, yes, because the type of atom it is is governed by the number of protons. But this carbon atom is no longer neutral. There's one fewer electron than protons. And so the atom is taken on a net plus one charge. We call an atom with a positive charge a cation. In fact, any chemical species that has a positive charge is called a cation. The symbol for a carbon atom with a plus one charge is shown here. It's C with a one plus, or just plus, in the upper right hand corner. Now let's do something different. What if we add two electrons to a neutral carbon atom? What happens then? Well, in this case, we produce what's called an anion. And the symbol for this anion is shown here. It's C with a 2 minus in the upper right-hand corner. Now let's talk about mass. We've already said that most of the mass in atoms is in the nucleus. To a chemist, it's the weight of atoms that's really very important, because when we talk about amounts of atoms, we're often talking about weights. Why is that? Well, because when we go in the lab to work with a chemical species, we don't count out individual atoms in a sample. We weigh out a certain amount of that sample. So it's really important to know the relationship between the number of atoms in a sample and the weight of the sample. Now, atoms are so small that for a sample to be big enough to actually handle, it has to have an astronomical number of atoms in it. And that's why chemists define a term, the mole. Chemists use the word mole like bakers use the word dozen, except that a chemist's mole is a whole lot bigger than a dozen. How much bigger? Well, take a typical helium party balloon. That balloon contains about 10 to the 23rd helium atoms. That's one followed by 23 zeros, or 100 billion trillion, helium atoms. Wow! More specifically, chemists define the mole to be exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's just a number. 
But the question is, why this strange number? Well, it turns out that this is the exact number of atoms in 12 grams. Exactly 12 grams of carbon-12 atoms. Take a 12-gram diamond, for example. Did you know that diamond is made up of just carbon atoms? Now, a 12-gram diamond is a really big diamond. It's about 60 carats. Now, that's a whopper of a diamond, isn't it? If all the carbon atoms in that diamond were carbon-12 atoms, then we could say that that 12-gram diamond contains exactly one mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, carbon atoms. That's very convenient. You see, the mass number and the weight in grams are the same. In this case, 12. And that makes it easy to remember. This idea is going to be a useful one when relating weights to numbers of atoms. And we'll use the concept of the mole over and over again as we study chemistry together. Okay, now let's say we have a diamond containing one mole of carbon-13 atoms. Here's a question. How much would a mole of carbon-13 atoms weigh? Well, our diamond would weigh 13 grams, wouldn't it? That's easy enough. But now try this. What if we have a mixture of the isotopes? That is, of carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms. What would be the weight of one mole then? Well, the weight would be between 12 and 13 grams, depending on the relative amount of carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms. And actually, this is a much more realistic situation. You see, in nature, we find both kinds of carbon atoms. We find mostly carbon-12, but there's also a small percentage of carbon-13 atoms. For example, if you went out and found a typical sample of carbon in the form of a great big diamond, you wouldn't find a diamond in nature that was just carbon-12 or carbon-13 atoms. A normal diamond containing one mole of naturally occurring carbon atoms would actually weigh 12.011 grams. That's what a real natural diamond containing one mole of carbon atoms would weigh because it's a mix, you see, of carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms. Now this number, 12.011, is called the atomic weight of carbon. Uh -huh. It represents the weight of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms in a typical naturally occurring mix of isotopes. Well, with all you've learned so far, you're now ready to be introduced to one of the most important icons of chemistry. Here it is, the periodic table of the elements. This is a list of all the elements known. Let's look at a particular entry in the list. Take, for example, hydrogen up here. You'll see that along with the chemical symbol of hydrogen, H, we also have the atomic number of hydrogen, one, and below the atomic weight of hydrogen. Notice that the elements are listed in order of atomic number, beginning with hydrogen one, going to helium two over here on this side, then to lithium three, beryllium four, boron five, carbon six, the one we've talked about, nitrogen seven, oxygen eight, fluorine 9, neon 10, and so on. Now the elements are organized in this fashion because it puts elements with similar chemical properties close to one another. And this is very handy for the chemists. Chemists use the periodic table a lot, 
And in fact, you'll be using the periodic table a lot in this class.